Hi there, I'm Java Jim with First Line Equipment, and here's a little sneak peek preview of the Ranchillo Silvia Pro Dual Boiler Espresso Machine. Ranchillo contacted me about 10 days ago and said, hey, Java Jim, do you want to make a video? We'll send you one of the first units on this machine here into the U.S. Uh, we want you to evaluate it, take a look at it, and uh, give us some feedback. So uh, we did receive this uh, Ranchilio Silvia Pro Dual Boiler Special Machine box in a larger box. We did open it. Uh, the first warning here is thoroughly inspect for any damages immediately and report them immediately. Okay, so that's a warning up here. Uh, as you can see here, Ranchilio Group made in Italy. Okay, we've been carrying the Ranchilio Silvia version one since 1998. Here we are in August of 2020. This preview is going to be shown in September of 2020. But Ranchilio is also owned by the Ali Group, which is a much larger group, which is known for the spirit of excellence. Now, important, when you get the box, uh, check for damages. If the outer box is damaged, I'm not concerned about. The inner one could take a hit, could be ripped from shipping. Uh, don't be alarmed, okay? There are staples here, okay? When you open this up, Remove the staples for two reasons. One, if it cuts you, it's gonna sting and hurt. That's number one. But number two, when you go lift the machine out of the box, these staples will scratch your machine. It has happened to one of my customers many years ago. So remove the staples. If you can't get them out by hand, I suggest you get a screwdriver or pliers. If you have longer fingernails, you're definitely gonna need uh, pliers or a screwdriver to, to yank them out. Uh, there's four on the sides there. Uh, there's one in the center here. And also on these flaps, I'm not so much concerned about these flaps. It's mostly these that will scratch. We have a piece of cardboard on the top. We have our, it looks like, instruction manual and test report kit. And we have some cardboard. This one seems to be a little more difficult to remove around the machine. And then, uh, best to put the machine on the floor, so I'm gonna put it down, I'll bring it right back up on the counter. Okay, this is a heavy machine. And I like to put one hand in it, in front of the group head, and lift it out from the back like that. So the group head's right here. Here it is in a plastic bag. We haven't even opened this machine or box. We opened the top of the box, but haven't taken the machine out yet. So this is literally out of the box. And there's a plastic bag. Typically, the Italians like to put the plastic bag from the back to the front. Okay, I, don't, I think they tested the unit with water before they shipped it. Lift up the machine here. Okay, so if you've had a Ranchilio Sylvie before, you're going to see this is a bigger unit. The regular Ranchilio Sylvia typically ends right around here, okay? This is a dual boiler, so it's gonna be much, much bigger. So you have more depth. The width looks the same. Okay, we have our power cord here. Bring that around the back. Here is our drip tray cover. It happens at least once a year. People complain. Uh, you sent me a white colored drip tray cover, okay? It's a plastic film that they will sometimes leave on top and sometimes they won't. Sometimes even the top or the sides will have the white film. Sometimes they don't. Stainless steel uh, drip tray, nice heavy weight. Steel frame, okay? The buttons here are kind of uh, the same, uh, except compared to the regular Sylvia, they usually stay in place. These are spring action here, okay? And you have your coffee here, PID, uh, similar steam valve and wand, okay? Water tank cover. Another difference, here we have the BWT, uh, looks like the osmotic pack. It's for lime scale production, or protection, I'm sorry. Uh, I've been trying to push the manufacturers more and more over the last few years 
to prevent lime scale and include something with the machine to prevent lime scale. Uh, it's really important because most of the machines come in for repair are because of lime scale. Okay, another noticeable difference here I see are the feet, much larger feet. Okay, a little stain over here, I'm not sure why, but there is. And in here, it looks like we have uh, some stainless steel guides on the framing on the inside. Okay, the machine does have a sticker that it is ETL approved. That's for basically electrical safety. Do not immerse this in water. Better not immerse it in water. So uh, that's kind of the review of this machine on the outside. And next we will go now on to the inside. We're gonna take the uh, water tank out. Now this is not a plumbable machine. Uh, there are six screws. The regular Sylvie has four. This one has six. As you can see, we have a top panel made in stainless steel. And basically you're just gonna wing these screws off. Right now I'm putting them in the reservoir. It's usually a good idea to put them in a cup. If you want, envelope and label them in case you're taking multiple panels off. Okay, it's kind of the same way as the Ranchilio Sylvia, uh, simple design. Now it is all handmade, hand assembled uh, in Italy. So you may see that there's a little more space on this side of the panel than this side. That's all because they're handmade, okay? Okay, and then, wow, this is a heavyweight panel. This is really, this is heavier than the regular Sylvia. I'm really impressed with that. Okay, inside here, we have our PID controller. We have our coffee boiler, which is the Sylvia coffee boiler. It has our thermal PID sensor, two safety thermostats, which is now uh, required in Europe, uh, insulated boiler. We have our uh, solenoid valve for the hot water. So there's no uh, hand valve, it's all a solenoid valve here. Looks like we might have a, some type of fuse in here uh, for the power, which is good. Here's our heating element, okay, the power there. Again, PID, looks like a, some type of heating light over here. We have our steam valve here. And then here looks like our either OPV or something's going on here. Here, and then back down here is our steam boiler. Here's our vacuum breaker valve. And where's our safety valve here? There's our PID sensor right here for the steam boiler heating element. And here's the OPV for the coffee boiler. And let's see, safety, I don't see the safety valve. I guess this one's the safety valve. This is something new for me right here. Yeah, this looks like the safety valve. That's, that's something very, very different. And then uh, the pumps are probably underneath. So let's turn the machine. Uh, let's see here, how's this body coming out? There's actually a screw here and a screw here. Okay, that one. Now there's clips up here. Uh, they tend to fall off. So just a smaller screwdriver. And this one is a little bit of a pain to get back in here. And okay, let me get this started. And I have to move the water tank platform to get access to that. Okay, there we go. Lefty Lucy. We don't have to remove the screw. We just have to loosen it. So I'm moving this panel to get access there. Okay, and let's take out these screws in the front. And hopefully there's no other screws. See, normally you would just lift it, oh, there we go. Just lift it up. So they left it open there for the screw. Again, these little brackets, they will slide off. Let's just take them off completely. And let's
let's get this screw a little more loose over here. There's a screw holding it on the bottom as well. Let's just take this one off. Yowzers. See, that's why repair guys always complain. It's not easy to fix machines because it doesn't always work smoothly. And this just proves my point here. And we don't. So what I'm going to do, is see if I can access through the front panel, that front screw there. I'm just taking two screws for the front panel off and see if I can get to it. Okay, so I took the, there's two screws that hold the front panel in place. And I'll access this one here, which is, seems to be a little tight. Now lift up and loosen it a little more. I know I'm not showing you, but we'll get there. There we go. So there's two screws here. Uh, these can be loosened on the front panel, but normally you just lift this up and then this here is held by this screw right back here. So this is the one that's a little difficult. There's a slot right here, but you gotta kind of bend this down and the pump has gotta be pushed in this way to access that screw. So now we have access to the inside of the machine and there's a stainless steel bracket that holds the platform. And the same thing happens on the regular Sylvia. I think these screws were put in before the Vino session in the afternoon. These screws are in mighty tight. Okay. Here we have our steam boiler, insulated, stainless steel, electronic board here, dual pump, okay. Why do we have a dual pump? One intake, dual pump. Well, we like dual pumps on dual boilers, especially when it's vibration pump. The reason is because if you're making espresso and steaming milk at the same time, and the water level drops, and it activates the pump to fill the boiler, your water pressure is going to drop for the espresso side. So that's why it's re a really good idea to have two pumps. Uh, these are vibration pumps. They have safety thermostats on them here. Okay, they're on their rubber connectors to keep it quiet. Stainless steel braided hose here. And this ho large hose for the safety valve seems to be going to the front drip tray. So we have that there. Okay, and back here, we have looks like some relays in here. So we have some relays right back in here. Now it is a good idea when you have relays like this to get a surge suppressor, 1080 joules or higher, because uh, any type of surge in your outlet will affect those two parts there first, or the safety thermostats. Those are usually the first two places that will get hit uh, with it. And here's our incoming power. So now I'll turn the machine towards uh, the front. So the two screws that I took out on the front panel were here and here. I also took out this little uh, extra panel right here. Here we have our three-way solenoid valve. This one's labeled coffee. That's for the coffee boiler. Here's the OPV. And this hose here, let's see where this is coming from. This one is coming from the bleeder valve. So those are going to fill your tray up when the machine is warming up, okay? Those will fill up there. And we have the one intake hose, 
the OPV on the coffee boiler is actually going back to the reservoir. And actually this must be the low water level sensor. That's what this one is. So my error before, I thought this was the intake. This is actually a low water level sensor uh, in the reservoir. And that's where it goes into the tank here. And then here's our intake hose. Again, we didn't prep this video. This is uh, live uh, as we go along. So that's uh, basically uh, the parts on the machine. And next we'll move over to the accessory kit. Now the accessory kit, the box has already been opened. Hmm. Let's open this up here. We have a two cup basket, single cup basket. Uh, looks like back flush detergent, a cleaning brush for the group head to clean the gasket in there. And the almighty scoop, okay? Don't even include this. I, I hate these scoops. A nice thing that they've upgraded on the Ranchillo Silvia, uh, the latest version, is putting in a nice heavyweight tamper, okay? Ka-ching! All right, so uh, nice and heavyweight. We'll go over that later. We have a commercial grade dual spout porta filter. Basket's going here. There should be a little, what we call a filter spring or metal spring in here. So uh, make sure that's included there. And then we have our back flush detergent disc. Um, we do sell the metal ones uh, on our website if you want the metal. But basically for back flush in the machine or back washing the group head, Okay, back flushing is different than descaling. Descaling is to clean the lime scale, magnesium, calcium that builds up inside the machine from the water. Back flushing cleans the oils in the screen and the group head. We have a lot of customers do back flushing and remove the screen. It's either one or the other. I prefer not to touch the screen and, and damage the bolt or the screen, but use the back flush disc that goes in here. You're basically blocking up the holes in the two cup basket putting in about a quarter to a third of a teaspoon of detergent. If you use too much detergent, you will clog up the solenoid valve right here. Because when you're backwashing, all the soapy, sudsy, uh, dirty water or solution will come into your drip tray through this valve. And if you have too much detergent, it will clog that up. I've seen that before. So less is more. Last but not least, we have our instruction manual. Okay, I'm not sure, I haven't, re I haven't read this. Uh, please read the manual uh, while you're inspecting the machine. Uh, looks like there's a few different languages in here, but uh, the most important thing will be in our next video, how to start up the machine and then using it. So uh, thank you for watching. This is Java Jim with First Line Equipment. I'm happy you stood this long. Please give us a thumbs up over here. Uh, any questions down below, click the link to get to the machine on our website and get it ordered. We should hopefully uh, have stock soon. Uh, we're expecting them uh, hopefully by November, but we heard that they may come sooner than November. Uh, we're trying to get them here as fast as possible, but we do have a bunch on order. Once again, Java Jim with First Line Equipment. Thank you for watching and have a great day.